Have any of you ever heard of Stephen Covey? He writes a bunch of different books on seven habits. He writes one, this one, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but he writes them on seven habits of highly effective college students, seven habits of highly effective high school students. He writes all those different kinds of books. Um, and what he, the reason why I've included this, and it's a book I'm sure you can get at the library or at Barnes & Noble, it's a great book, but he talks about time with these four different quadrants, which I think are really good. He talks about there are activities that are urgent and important. Urgent and important. Those would be considered priority A, priority one. What kind of things are urgent and important? What do you think would be urgent and important? Anybody? Anybody? How about paying a bill? Dropping a class by the deadline? Uh, handing in a paper that has a specific deadline? Making sure that you do that quiz online that's due at a certain time or finishing something up? Um, so it, those are pressing things, and they're usually based upon a deadline. So they're urgent and they're important. Priority B, he has, is important but not necessarily urgent. What kind of things might be important but not necessarily urgent? Can you think of anything that might be important but not necessarily urgent? These are usually things that um, are, that we, they call them relationship building, uh, planning, and some recreation. So, Exercise is very important, and we suggest you do a little bit each day. But it's not necessarily urgent. If you have to put off one day to the next day, it would be okay. If starting study groups are often very good for many students, but maybe you don't have to do it the first week of class. Maybe you can wait until the classes gets going and you know the people in your class a little bit better. So they are important, and we don't suggest that they go off the list, but they're not necessarily urgent in priority A. Then down here, he has urgent and not important. And urgent and not important are things that are phone calls that need to be made, but you know, they're not necessarily important phone calls, but you feel as they're urgent. Um, not important or urgent. You really want to go to a concert on the weekend, and the tickets go on sale at 8 AM. It would be urgent because it's time, it's a deadline. But whether or not you go is probably not as important. It's more of a relaxing. It's something a little bit extra. So those kinds of things fit in there. Certainly put it on your to-do list, but it doesn't go necessarily to the top. It's not priority A. And then the last one is not urgent and not important. What kind of things do you think are not urgent and not important? I know you're smiling, so you're all thinking of things that are not urgent and not important. Those are the things that usually are considered time wasters. Those are the long, long phone calls that really aren't urgent. It's not like somebody has a crisis that you need to talk to them about. Um, it might be mindlessly surfing the web. Um, it could be doing walking around, doing something aimlessly, chit-chatting when you know you should be doing something else. The thing about these things is that many times they're very pleasant activities, it's things you like to do. You know, maybe it is catching up on your um, whatever, Facebook for hours. Uh, so that can be something you enjoy doing, but it does take you away from other things. And our suggestion with the uh, priority D is not important, not urgent, is really scratch them off your list until you get everything else done. And these would be your last priority. So the, the uh, surfing the web for hours um, on nothing uh, or picking out your holiday list it would not be the thing we'd suggest. And then probably the most, how many of you have a planner? Anybody in the room have a planner? Okay, good. So a few people have a planner. Number one, it's really great to have a planner. That's really important. Um, you can get a planner that you can purchase, or you can get a planner, um, you can use Google Calendar, you can use your phone. They, but no matter what you decide to use, the important thing is that you use it. Having a planner by itself is just pretty. Um, but using it is what really makes the difference um, in, in the world. But, Everyone has access to Google Calendar through their Pride account, so if you guys, this is learning support back here, we'll support you with your software needs. If you want to learn how to use Google Calendar, how to set up appointments, how to get reminders, how to put it on your mobile device, you can stop back and we can help you with that. So whatever you decide, Google Calendar, your phone, a, an actual planner, whichever works for you, fantastic, just get something and use it. And the way you use the calendar, the first thing that you do is you identify those fixed things, the, the classes that can't be changed, the meetings that can't be changed, and you want to put all those things into your calendar first. So those things go in first, they can't be changed. 
The second thing is you're going to record all of your class assignments and exams. How many of you looked back at your syllabuses since the first week? Good, that's good. Um, many times, you know, people say, oh, that's really good, and they think, oh, I'm going to write this in my appointment book, and then it kind of goes in the side, and it doesn't necessarily get written in. And, and that's really where some people fall behind, is that they don't write it down. So making sure that you write it down. Um, you want to put in any co-curricular activities, things that are very important to you. Um, it, not necessarily everything, but you're going to want to pick some things that are important to you that you don't want to miss. Um, the important also thing is you're going to put in your work orders, and if you have any social or family commitments, Put those in the calendar and then you work around them so that you're able to schedule around things. You're going to review that calendar every week. Once, you know, sometimes you'll find people that are great, they get their calendar, they get the syllabi, they get their work schedule, and it's beautiful, color coded. You probably know somebody like this, it's color coded, but then they never look at it again. And if you don't look at it again, it's just a pretty piece of document. It's not anything that you can use. So what we suggest is that every, t every week you actually review your calendar and pick those top priorities, those things that are most important for you to get done that week. Um, and after you do that, you're also going to want to make sure that you have your, any due dates that week. And anything that you find that's really urgent deadline, so if it's the last day to drop a class, the last day to add a class, you want to put a star or something so that you know that that's urgent, so you don't miss that during that particular week. Uh, I would recommend doing a to-do list daily. Now, some people, that drives them crazy because there's a lot of lists around. But if you get up in the morning over your coffee or before you go to bed at night and write down, this is what I want to do today. This is my to-do list for this day. And keep it reasonable. Many times you're able to actually really focus in on those things. And it kind of keeps you motivated about getting things done. When anytime you're thinking about a big project, we always recommend that you do the, the hardest part, the part that you're dreading the most, the piece that you don't think you want to do, and try and do that first. One of the things that happens for a lot of students is they put off putting that, that hard piece until the end. And instead, they say, I'm going to get all my errands done first, and then I'll be fresh. But in fact, what we usually find is that people are fresh when they first start the project. So usually, if, if you find your good time of day and really start working on that project, and leave the little errands when you've got some time in between uh, will really work out. Uh, the big projects, if you have something huge for a semester, you want to break it down into much smaller projects. And just on your to-do list, you're going to put in the smaller projects there as well. Um, how many of you know when your good time is to study? Anybody? What's your best time? I'm the, in the morning. You're a morning person. Great. You don't always hear that on the college <laughs> campus. Um, anybody else a morning person? Love to get up at 8 o'clock and do your work? Yeah, that's usually more like it. Usually we see people that say, you know, 8 o'clock at night is much better for me. And again, this is one of those things you have to assess for yourself. Find out when your best time is, and whenever that is, that's your high energy time. You want to make sure that you're spending that time um, on the project that, again, the hard project, the project that's kind of um, going to take a little bit more time and concentration. If you're not a morning person, did any of you not a morning person ever have to take an early class? How'd that work? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's not usually anyone's favorite activity because it, it's not your energy time. So now you're in a class and you're not really excited to be there and it's not your high energy time. As opposed to when you take the classes at the time when you're really good, you feel better about it, you do better in, in the class. Same thing when you're thinking about homework or any of your other activities. The other thing we're going to talk about a little bit too is really using the time in between classes. 